Krita 3.1 is right around the corner. It's the first official stable Mac release with full OpenGL support. And this means two things. First of all, the developers are now committed to fixing Mac-specific bugs. And second, you will now be able to enjoy Krita's full performances on Mac. This is already quite big, but on top of that, as always, there is a number of major features added in this version. Starting with animated GIF and video export. You can now export your animation using FFmpeg, a popular uh, video encoding library. You can choose from a number of encoding formats and presets to export to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And you can also export animated GIFs if you just want to post your image on forums. Animation got some love with the addition of the new graph editor. And yes, you got me right, there's a graph editor in Krita. It only allows you to animate the opacity of your layers right now, but it's the first step to implementing proper tweening. Eventually, you will be able to animate your layers transform masks, thus to scale, rotate, and translate them using the graph editor. But wait, there is more. On top of that, you can now animate masks. You can animate transparency masks, but also filter layers or anything else like you would animate a regular paint layer. And last but not least, you can use the same color tags you have access to in the layers docker on your keyframes. This can help you to organize your animations a bit better, especially if you have complex documents. Let's now move on to a feature that I really love. It's the new color picker. So for the pop-up palette and the select a color window, you now have a fully color managed color picker, allowing you to use your color profiles and bit depth to their full potential. If you don't know what color management is, basically your computer screen can only display so many colors, far less than the ones you can find in the real world, the ones you can use for printing. So having the ability to pick colors beyond the ones your computer screen can render will allow you to find very rich, vibrant tones for your print. And on top of that, knowing a bit about color management is useful if you want to paint with the Color Smudge Brush Engine and if you are working with filters a lot. But color management is not the easiest topic to wrap your head around and will take a dedicated tutorial series to properly explain. Currently, only the pop-up palette and the select a color window are color managed, not the other dockers like the advanced color selector, but this will come in a future release. There is a new brush engine that's lightning fast and it's called Quick Brush. It is simple, but it offers excellent performances. It was added to help people who are working with very big documents work faster. It's useful for those of you who are doing inking work and those working for print or those who are working with slow computers. The trade-off is that you only have access to the size and the spacing parameters. You cannot control the brush opacity or brush flow using your pen pressure. There's one last important feature that was added, and it is the stop-based gradient editor. Creating new gradients used to be a bit cumbersome, but thanks to that change, it is now much more user-friendly. If you downloaded the beta version, you will see that there is still the lazy brush tool that's available as well. Um, it does work right now, but it is too slow to use in production. The developers decided that they will remove it for the 3.1 release and uh, keep improving it. There are a handful of smaller improvements that were implemented as well, including the ability to stroke a selection by going to the edit menu and picking the stroke selection option. There's a new halftone filter in the artistic category. There is a new eraser switch opacity option in the brush editor, just like the eraser switch size. You can also create a new layer from Visible. This is the equivalent of a copy merged in Photoshop. And there are also more than 30 bug fixes, including the performance issues with the stabilizer. And that's it for this version. You can find the link to the release notes with all of the documentation in the video description. See you in the next tutorial.